Good evening and welcome to St. Ignatius. Will you please stand and join in our opening hymn, number 42 in your hymnal, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus, number 4-2. Happy New Year, everyone. Year, you know what I'm talking about, right? It's the new church year, Advent. And so we pray together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. We prepare ourselves to receive Jesus in the Word of God and in the Blessed Sacrament by examining our conscience. You bring light to those who are in darkness. Lord, have mercy. You forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and Judah. In those days, in that time, I will raise up for David a just shoot. He shall do what is right and just in the land. In those days, Judah shall be safe and Jerusalem shall dwell secure. This is what they shall call her, the Lord our justice. The word of the Lord.
and of faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and the commands. The Lord's secret is for those who fear him. To them he reveals his covenant. To A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we have for you, so as to strengthen your hearts to be blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his holy ones. Amen. Finally, brothers and sisters, we earnestly ask and exhort you in the Lord Jesus that as you have received from us how you should conduct yourselves to please God, and as you are conducting yourselves, you do so even more. For you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, there will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. And on the earth, nations will be in dismay, perplexed by the roaring of the seas and the waves. People will die of fright in anticipation of what is coming upon the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken, and then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. But when these signs begin to happen, stand erect and raise your heads, because your redemption is at hand. Beware that your hearts do not become drowsy from carousing and drunkenness, in the anxiety of daily life, and that they catch you by surprise, like a trap. For the day will assault everyone who lives on the face of the earth. Be vigilant at all times, and pray that you have the strength to escape the tribulations that are imminent, and to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. The word Advent comes from the Latin word Adventus, meaning the coming, the arrival. And so we are waiting for Jesus to come again. Many people think that Advent, the waiting, the arriving, refers to the coming of Jesus during Christmas time. And that's half of the story because we're also waiting for Jesus to come at the end of time. Yet, do we realize 
that Jesus also comes every day of our life, nowadays. We just don't know it. We're just not paying attention enough. In the first reading from the prophet Jeremiah, he refers to the first coming of the Christ child in Bethlehem, which we are anticipating the celebration of in about four weeks. The prophet wrote, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. Then the gospel moves us along to the second coming of Jesus as the eternal judge at the end of time. They will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Many people tend to speculate what Jesus meant about these words. There will be signs in the sun, in the moon, in the stars, and on the earth, nations will be in dismay. We could spend time trying to interpret the natural and astronomical signs that are there. And try to interpret, do these things that are happening now really mean that we're coming to the end of times? Many of you have asked those questions from us. Instead of looking at the things around us and other people to see what may be going wrong with them, perhaps we should be looking at ourselves. being more attentive to the chaos, the disorders, the distractions that are going on in our own private life. I say that because really the point of all these teachings in the church is to strengthen our disorders and to change them into a more Christian life. An important question for each of us is to ask ourselves when Jesus comes again at the end of time, what would he see in me? Our life is a journey, it's a pilgrimage. Past events that have happened, they're important because they deeply affect how we are now. The choices that we make, who we are now and what we are now. What is more important though is to know where we are going, where our final destination should be. Why is that important? Remember the uh, baseball great Yogi Berra? He once said, you got to be very careful if you don't know where you're going because you might not get there. As Christians, Jesus wants us to go where? To heaven, yes. And he's given us many, many guidance through the scriptures, through the saints. And in our present life, he's doing everything he can 
to keep an eye on each one of us whom God has placed on this earth. And he instructs us today, he says, beware that your hearts do not become drowsy from carousing and drunkenness and the anxieties of daily life. And that the day catch you by surprise like a trap. You see, without God, there are so many things that can make us give up easily, weigh us down in life. The wars that are plaguing the world right now, the indifference that people have, not caring for anyone, being passive, not seeking the good of other people, only seeking the good of ourselves, people being greedy, people being selfish, the broken relationships that we've experienced, the declining health that many of us are going through, and even the death of a family member. Yet through all that, Jesus is with us. He has not left us. Pope Francis once said, and I'm quoting him, it is important to remain watchful because one great mistake in life is to get absorbed in a thousand things and not notice God. Drawn by our own interest and distracted by so many vain things, we risk losing sight of what is essential. And that's why it's important for us to never forget to pray when we are afraid, when we are in distress, when we are angry. Because Jesus will give us the grace, the wisdom that we need to overcome everything. He will give us the wisdom to accept the things that we cannot change and the wisdom to change the things we cannot, the things that we can change. And not everything has to go our way. Modern day society has become spoiled people. You see, if everything went the way we wanted it to be, then we would become cocky. We would start thinking we don't need God anymore because we're good enough. We can do it ourselves. And many people in society have become that way. Therefore, as brothers and sisters in Christ, if you want to celebrate the first coming of Jesus Christ, and prepare for his second coming, then pay attention to him now, every moment of your life, because he is there with you, even in this Advent season. You are never alone. God is always with you. Ask Jesus to help you to change for the better. Many of us don't even know how we can be better. But God will always give you what's best for you. You just have to pay attention to him and ask him. He's always, always working on each one of us. There's never a moment, even during the most difficult times, he's with us. And so we don't have to resort on our familiar former ways of sinning when we are upset. You know the four letter words, right? Revenge on anyone, because God 
will take care of all that. The second reading spoke to us about welcoming Jesus in our lives, here and now. May the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we have for you, so as to strengthen your hearts to be blameless in holiness before our God and our Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his holy ones. And so this time is very important, what we're doing now, what we do every moment of our life, because it links Jesus' first coming on Christmas Day to his second coming at the end of time. Jesus is with us now. We must never forget that. Please stand, and together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God, true God. Begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. The Lord will come again as he has said he would. In vigilance we wait, making straight our paths toward the final day of glory, lifting our hearts to him in prayer. Our response will be, Lord, Hear our prayer. For the church, as we begin a new liturgical year, may the Holy Spirit refresh within us a zeal for the good news. We pray to the Lord. Lord for all in civic authority and all who protect and defend our life and liberty, may God bestow upon them wisdom and courage. We pray to the Lord. Lord for those who feel alone or abandoned, may God be their refuge and bring them abiding peace. We pray to the Lord. For our parish this Advent, may God inspire us to grow ever more deeply in the ways of his love. We pray to the Lord. For all who have died, especially Mary Jo Glodek, May God bring them eternal peace in heaven with all the angels and saints. We pray to the Lord. Lord for Angelo and Rose Stefanoni, for whom this Mass is offered, and for the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. God, our Father, by the coming of your Son, you have made us sharers in your divine nature. May we receive your Son in mystery now and be ready one day for his return in glory, for he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our hymn for the preparation of the gifts can be found on page 746 in your hymnal, To You, O Lord, number 746. <laughs>
stand and pray as brothers and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us. And may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the price of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of the human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and in majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with the angels and the archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when as once for the disciples and so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. He gave you thanks. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, with all the bishops, the priests, the deacons, in the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters, inspiring us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly, after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace, and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her blessed spouse, with the blessed apostles, the martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. We pray for the salvation of all the people in the world. Our Father, who art in heaven, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace, I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
For the announcements, next Saturday is our Christmas Bazaar, and we hope you can stop by. This is the last week to turn in the raffle tickets, and there are some in the narthex 
and they'll be for sale the day of the bazaar. In the narthex, the Holy Name Society is selling tickets to their breakfast with Santa. And if there are any parishioners who are in any financial hardship, and a few gift cards can be, and a few gift cards can help you through the Christmas season, please call the parish office or go to the website and provide your contact information. Any information we receive will be held in strict confidence. We want to know who needs help during the holiday season. Please stand and let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and to hold fast to what endures. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please bow your heads for the blessing. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son, and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent, and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. Amen. Amen. So that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of the Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is on page number 73, The Advent of Our King, number 73.